Welcome back everyone and welcome back to the channel. So we're on day three of the Cutlass and uh, we went ahead and did some work during the evenings when I got home from work on a couple of different panels on the vehicle. So you guys seen the door. I'll show you some little pics and maybe a small video of this when I was blocking it. And I went ahead and primed it with the P30 black and it came out straight. I mean, it's really, really straight. So once we block this again, this thing will be perfect. And uh, we're, we did the trunk, but today we're gonna be focusing on the right side of this car and blocking it out and uh, getting it straight so we can get this whole thing primed up and then pull the fenders, pull everything off, cut it all in, put it back together, block it and spray it. So let's get into this job today, guys. All right, guys, so if you haven't checked out the last couple of videos, go back in and uh, check them out. But we went ahead and already blocked this side of the vehicle. You could see the, the car from the start on the first one, how it started out. But this side's blocked and ready. That's the door that I showed you earlier. It's primed up. We went ahead and slick sanded that and then primed it with the uh, P30 black. So we're gonna get into the other side so we can get this thing done. And also, I was telling you guys in the beginning video to get your stuff ordered. I went ahead and ordered all the stuff we're gonna need to put this thing back together. I got the uh, O-rings for the um, handles, the keyholes, a couple different, um, all the stickers that went under the trunk, new weather strips for the doors, new weather strips for the, the uh, trunk. And every little thing I could think of, I'm gonna need to put back on this thing to make it right. So I ordered everything here from this company, opgi.com, and they have everything for the Cutlass. If anybody's looking for parts, check them out online. And uh, here's all the lists of everything we ordered. So we got them coming. Hopefully we'll get everything in time for uh, when we're ready for it. So just wanted to show you that, that we got the stuff coming and uh, let's get into this one today. All right guys, so the first thing today I'm gonna do is pull this door off, because we know on the last time we did the uh, other side, that door was the most work, and it'd be a lot easier for me to sand it and work on it on a stand here. So I'm gonna get the door off, and uh, you know, I wanna make it as easy as I can. I realized that that door had more body work than anything, and I was on that door for quite some time on my knees trying to block it, and it was just a pain in the neck. So. We learn as we go, and now this door's coming off, so that way we can do most of the body work is on these doors. So let's go ahead and uh, take off the door. We'll bag up this hole on the car, that way we get no more dust in there. And uh, we got my jack here, because I'm doing this by myself. So let's go ahead and take this off, get it on a stand, and uh, continue moving forward. All right, so I like to use a jack, being I'm doing this alone, and I'll put, a, put the jack underneath the door, just to give it some, uh, help holding it up. Don't go too heavy with it. And this jack's nice because it doesn't have the, the big lip on it. It's smooth with this rubber on it so it doesn't scratch it too much. So just put a little, just get it on there. That way you can uh, get a little help from that. And when you're getting it off by yourself, it makes it easy. So this car is nice because it doesn't have any wires in it at all. It's so old school that it's, uh, Got no wires at all. I always start at the bottom. Don't start taking your bolts off at the top. Take the bolts at the bottom off first. That way the weight of the door doesn't start to spring like this on your uh, hinges. It'll hold from the top even if you take the bottom ones off. So always take the bottom ones off first. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this off here now. It's got six bolts. Now we'll go ahead and tape up this hole. That way we keep all as much dust out as we can. That way later we don't have to do as much cleaning on it. So I recommend this for sure. Especially if you got, you know, your interior done already. You'll definitely want to keep it nice. So cover it up nice, tape it up and uh, keep out all the dust you can. So let's get this finished up here. We got the door on it. And, uh, and now we got the door off. So this is where the majority of the work is on this car, where these doors were the waviest. So I wanna be able to get to it without kneeling down and I can block it on here a lot easier. 
and faster. So let's go ahead and uh, get this thing ready to roll. All right, so today we're gonna start out on the door because we know that we had a slick sand this last time. So in order for me to prime the whole car and prime everything, I gotta get this thing slick sanded if necessary. So I'm not sure of that yet, but we're gonna go ahead and see. We'll start out on this. And we're gonna use the rigid, longer, big green one that I like on this first with 180 grit with the sticky. So if you guys are new to the channel, we bought the Big Kid blocks and these are really good for getting a flat surface when you're doing these type of jobs and you want something laser straight. So let's go ahead and start blocking this door down and uh, see what we find. We knew the other one needed a little bit of putty work done to it. And then I went ahead and did that uh, polyester spray, sprayable primer on it to uh, give it one extra coat and uh, seal it up nice. So that stuff's a direct to metal primer and it's a really good stuff for blocking stuff because usually it's cheaper than regular primer and it's thicker. So you save money by blocking with that stuff. If you got to get something straight, don't waste your money using a real high end 2K to uh, get yourself leveled out. Use something like that that's gonna build faster and thicker and it's cheaper. And then use your 2K at the end, that way you just have a nice treated 2K product. Cause what I love about that P30 black is it lets you see the body work cause it's black. And then it has its own guide coat cause it, it sands dull. So, and it's also pre-flex. So it's a really, really good high end primer. So you don't wanna waste that stuff. You want to use something like the uh, slick sand or the Evercoat polyester first. So let's start blocking it. I wanted, I wanted to show you guys the door already. It's already showing up with the low spots being you got that flat edge on it. So see this here? This is what I ended up filling on the other door with the putty because these doors usually dip up because this is where the strength is on this door from the inner shell. And a lot of these doors have a dip in them, but I hate the way that looks. So we're probably gonna have to wipe that one like we did the other side with the putty and uh, go from there, but it's doing its thing. So we'll keep on blocking. All right guys, so we're still blocking on it. And I was using the same block as I did on the other side. It's kind of the same steps. That's why I'm not really filming everything. You know, tune into the first video and we're blocking it the same way. We got the big kid blocks for the straight panels. We got these with a little bit of foam in them for some of these valleys that you want to make sure you don't gouge it with a block. And uh, we're just blocking along. So I don't want to bore you guys with this blocking process, but this is very key to getting this car straight. It takes time. And as like I said before, this is the biggest part of this job is blocking it because that's what I'm going for a real straight finish. So it's going to take some time to do it, but it'll be well worth it in the end. So I'm just blocking along and trying to get it done. So, but I am fighting the weather and I don't want to get this garage too dusty by closing this up. So I got to get this thing moved out of here to prime it. And I'm trying to do as much at home. That way I can feel like I'm not working on the job. So when I'm home, I can run in, get something to eat, get a drink and relax a little bit. But once I get to my shop or anywhere else, it's just uh, straight up work. So I'm trying to do as much at home to be home and then move it when I have to. So but I'm fighting the weather and I'm fighting dirtying up this garage here. Cause you know how the old lady will get when you start dirtying up stuff and dusting, bringing dust through the house. So we got to deal with that. We got to deal with the weather and uh, trying to get it done. So just keep on blocking. All right guys, so I'm still here blocking away and I'm bouncing back and forth from this to this as the putty's drying. I'm jumping on this cause this one I'm gonna take over and slick sand it. And uh, that way that part of that job is done. So I'm just blocking away, sanding the putty now. 
And then uh, I'm gonna finish up sanding on this and we'll get this slick sanded. But this just had the same spots as the other car did, the other door. It had the dip here, had a little bit of wave at the bottom of the door, but nothing special. So we're just blocking the putty and this door will be ready for slick sand here shortly. So hopefully we can get it in the truck without it getting wet. Cause I told you it's raining heavy out here today. So let's keep on blocking this. Get it done, we'll finish up this. This will be all ready. And then all we'll have left is the hood. And I told you that that thing is pretty much straight. So it'll be like the trunk. I blocked it and hit it with primer. So at that point we'll be uh, priming it and put, pulling the fenders so we can cut it all in and then belt it back up together and shoot it. And this is where these big kid blocks really work well they shine with the with the putty and like the slick sand i love using these for the slick sand and the uh the putty the, the clear doesn't sand well and it never does when you go to block and clear coat so but now that i moved on to this stage and when i did the door in the trunk it really worked well for that so Shout out to Big Kid Black. I know a lot of you guys say they break easy when you drop them. I've already dropped them quite a few times and I didn't get any breaks. So I'm either getting lucky or they're holding up fine. So I'm gonna keep blocking and uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys, so you see we went ahead and slick sanded that and uh, we went over to my shop and did that because, you know, you got to have clean airlines. I'm a stickler when it comes to having clean airlines because all that work you do will go wasted if your lines are dirty and you got water in them. So make sure you guys have desiccant dryers, refrigerant dryers, and make sure you have the right stuff so you don't have any problems with moisture because that'll ruin the whole job later. So. If you guys need a little setup, that's a really nice setup here. This is one I use that's uh, portable from DeVilbis. And you just plug in one line to this and then plug out there and it's a portable desiccant you guys could pick up. And I use this too in certain instances, but you don't wanna just prime anything and have uh, just a small home filter. Like this is what I'm running here. Just a small little filter with a small desiccant and I don't do any prime in here. This is just for the air tools and stuff like that. So it's fine for that, but I wouldn't recommend using anything like that to prime cars, especially with bare metal because it'll bite you later. You'll have moisture and it'll let loose. So let's show you the door all slick sanded. So this is a nice hard surface. Now, once we block this, everything is sealed in with this and we block it with 180 <clears throat> and then we do this with the primer with the P30. So we go from this to this and this is ready to go now. And this is our P30 with the uh, flex additive already built in. So really good stuff. And I like using that uh, slick sand for that. And then I like using this P30 for this. So the car is all finished up. The whole side's done like the other side blocked out, etch prime, and uh, ready to go. So we're gonna be blocking this slick sand down, repriming that door, and then priming the body of the car. So, so I hope you guys like episode three of the Cutlass Respray, and uh, give it a thumbs up, and see you on the next one as we probably prime it and start taking off the fender. So see you next time.